Rob, he, him in Canada. There's a lot of things about evolution Hello. that don't match the science. Hey, Rob. Yeah, how you guys doing? Good. Uh, yeah, doing well, man. How are you? Good, good. Good, man. No, as, uh, as far as evolution goes, uh, the way science is working nowadays is science is becoming more and more accurate. There's a lot of evidence that proves against evolution. They've been finding things lately that uh, kind of turn it upside down. Uh, as an example, like, they found man-made objects inside coal deposits. Uh, they found trees in the upside-down position going through uh, millions of different layers of uh, sedimentary, sedimentary layers, meaning millions mm -hmm. of different years old, which doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. They found clams in the closed position on the top of Mount Everest. Uh, that's just to name a few. So there's a lot of things that don't sure. line up here in terms of the science. Yeah. Okay, right, so so you named three things. I'm gonna try to get through all of them, but we got to move kind of fast. Yep. Yeah, but, we got We got to go um, fast. So sure. yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna talk a little bit fast. If I leave something out, I apologize. But I'm gonna try to get all those three things. Okay. Um, the first one that you said was that they find man-made objects inside coal deposits. Is that right? Correct. Okay, so Correct. there are a lot of cases. There are a lot of times where you know how uh, stalagmites and stalactites grow. How the you have like water that carries little bits of sediment, little bits of minerals, and then those minerals crystallize and it builds a structure. You know what I'm talking about? Um, there's a lot of cases, a lot of cases where certain minerals can calcify and can can harden and can crystallize this way faster than others. And so there's actually a bunch of examples of things like there's a really famous picture of a ladder that's almost completely encased in stone because this is a very soft form of limestone and the rain washing over it carries these deposits onto the ladder which then crystallize onto the iron and then crystallize onto each other and so this ladder is now encased in rock and it looks like it's been there for millions of years when really it's been there for a couple of decades um so that's not rare or unique at all um i would challenge that it's probably not actually coal there might be coal present but coal does take a long time to form but coal is also malleable and it can kind of move around a little bit so it's not like for sure guaranteed that's all that it is there are logical explanations for that 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 don't fit a creationist model that fit perfectly well with the age of the earth the second thing that you said was oh trees cutting through several layers of stratigraphy that are also upside down and the layers are upside down is that i think that was what it was um that's also something that's remarkably common go ahead because of sterno's laws of superpositioning we understand that you know lower layers are older than uh, higher layers but also that a layer permeating all of those layers is the youngest of all of them that's the part that a lot of times gets left out when people talk about these things is that the laws of superpositioning say that the lower the layer the older it is however if you have something permeating through several layers that is for sure the youngest one and this is what we see in these things also, you can see a lot of cases, for example, in uh, several earthquakes, a lot of earthquakes, meteor strikes, for example, if you go to like the look at the Behringer meteor crater, um, a lot of the stratigraphy for like millions of years is completely flipped upside down because of the ejection and the way that the earth basically turned into a fluid and moved this way because of the extreme heat and pressure and force. So those things happen too. You can have str strata that get flipped, that get inverted, that get twisted, that get so turned sideways. You can drive down here in Oklahoma through the Arbuckle Mountains and you can see a tremendous amount of strata that are going at a weird angle because as those mountains formed, it just turned millions of years on its head. Um, and having something that permeates through that proves that that is the youngest thing because that's the second half of, of the laws of superpositioning that tell us how that works. Um, and then the third thing that you said was about clamshells on Mount Everest. That also is, act not only does that fit hand in hand with the theory of evolution, but that's actually one of the things that drove Darwin to come up with these ideas, which Darwin wasn't the only one. The ideas of evolution have been around for thousands of years. Darwin was just the one that put it on paper. Um, anyway, uh, we, we found fish fossils especially you know a lot of marine fossils whales and clams especially up on top of mountains and this is because these things existed millions of years ago and died and fossilized mm. underwater and then plate tectonics drove this part that was underwater up high so when the uh, uh, indian supercontinent crashed into asia and drove up the 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 himalayas there all of this fossils underneath are now driven up and you can still go up on that fossil hunting on mountains is very very common you can go up on mountains and find all sorts of really cool echinoderms all sorts of really cool coral here in oklahoma again like we this whole area used to be an ocean back in the the uh, 
Carboniferous period. And so you can go all over Oklahoma and find trilobites and you can find coral and you can find, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, echinoderms and all sorts of things. Um, I've got uh, literally here, this is a, a shell full of fossils, full of all sorts of little, these are, this one's a stingray tooth. This one's a brachiopod. There's a little, a little clam shell. These are shark teeth. These are ammonites. These are all things you can find on the ground here in Oklahoma because this place used to be underwater and we have mountains well, here. Let me well, ask, we go up on the mountains and things get driven up. So there's cut, answers to all three of your questions. Let me let me cut in here, Rob. What why would you? Yeah. Why would why would you say that? Um, for instance, a clam uh, fossil on a mountain would disprove evolution. Why would you think that was different than what Forrest just described? Well, the clam was found in the closed position, so that points out more to a flood than you know oh, the flood of years ago because the clam uh, the clam wasn't a lot the clam was alive at the time when it was uh you know it, it was alive and all of a sudden God, that's why the, that's why it's closed it you died know, you know that clams it's, don't always open when they die right no i'm saying I, I i'll rephrase that the clam was alive and then it got buried through some kind of a flood that's that's how it looks to me how do you know that it, Otherwise, how do you know that it was alive because you find it in a closed position. That means it was alive. Yeah, not, then it got uh, Not all clams open when they die. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes shit happens that makes that not happen. Rob, are you so asserting... So how do you know that it wasn't a dead clam that happened to be closed? How do you know for sure it was alive? Oh, this, this, is a, this is a lot of clams. We're not just talking one or two. This is a lot. Okay, Rob, let me ask so you... Sure. Let me, yeah. Rob, let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Rob, do you believe in the in the literal story of Noah's Ark and the, and the Great Flood as, as presented in the Bible in Genesis? Well, the Great Flood certainly points out to all the uh, scientific do, evidence do, that they've been finding. Do, 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 uh, do you believe, do, do, evolution. Rob, 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 do, Rob, I asked you a, a, a yes and no question. Do you believe in the literal, literal interpretation as presented in Genesis of a worldwide flood as Presented with Noah and the uh, the commonly known as Noah and the Ark. Do you believe in that? Sci on a scientific basis, yeah, it points to it. Do you believe that happened? Yes, I do. Okay, and you think that clams on Mount Everest uh, are evidence of such as that? It points to a massive worldwide flood. Uh, that's just one example of of many. Okay, so you believe the the Earth is relatively sixty two hundred years old, six thousand years old, according to biblical uh, genealogies. I'd say, I'd say you're closer to well, more six thousand than let's say uh, four million, which is uh, four billion, okay. which is what they want you to believe. Yeah, what they want you to believe? Who's they? Well, that's evolution. That's the, the Big Bang theory. Uh, all of it combined. Big Bang theory has nothing to do with that. <laughs> So let me ask you another question. Uh, it goes back to 14.6 billion years ago, and you came from a dot of nothing that exploded, and then you were a hot ball okay. of uh, molten Rob, rock. Let me ask, let me, let me, let me, Rob, 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 let me ask you a, let me ask you a related question, brother. Um, if in fact the biblical narrative of Noah, Noah's flood is true, do you really want that to be the narrative of God in relation to his people, his created people? Because you know what that story says is that God repented of the idea that he had made man. He regretted that he had made man. He realized he'd made a mistake because uh, men were wicked all over the world. And God's only solution to the mistake he made was to drown all of humanity except one family, including women children, and, wait for it, pregnant women. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you probably identify as pro-life and anti-abortion, and you realize that God, the God you serve, the God that you uh, are devoted to, that you believe in, drowned pregnant women back in the days of Noah and the ark. Are you okay with that? Well, you got to understand that back in the days of Noah and the Ark, uh, what was written and exactly what happened. He, he asked you, so no question. Are you, are are you okay are, with are that? You, are you okay with based that? You okay with that? Time, based on, yeah, based on the circumstances of what was taking place, yeah. 
What were, what were the circumstances so you for think that, that all innocent, of those, all of those, those babies, innocent children, those babies in the womb and innocent children, a two year old toddler? What are the circumstances that warrant that baby being drowned by the creator you love? What are the circumstances, Rob? Well, you have to understand that back in those days, you have to understand. What were, do I have to understand? Yeah, well, the wickedness well, of man on all the you're earth. You're asking me a question. I'm, you're asking me a question. I'm giving you the answer. Okay. What's back the in answer? that time, the world was 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 uh, saturated with evil to a point where he had to eliminate that problem. That's what he did. What that what, little, that little two year old was do? evil. That little one year old kid was evil. Pardon? That little one year old kid that got drowned. Do? What what was evil? What was evil? What was going on at the time? Uh, no. There, there what was, was evil? What did the babies do? What did the baby do, Rob? Rob? There was a lot of there was a lot of life what going on did, back then. What did the baby that, do that warranted being drowned? One of the most horrible deaths, by the way, that you can endure. What did the baby do that warranted that? God had no other solution to rid the world of wickedness than to drown the people He created. Fuck your God, Rob. That sounds awful. Yeah, you tell me this is the, sounds, the most... I know it sounds... I know it sounds... Yeah, bad. it does. Uh, this yeah. this God is the most it's, powerful, it's, most it's, intelligent it's, being in the it's, universe, it's, and it can't come up with anything better than I gotta drown a bunch of babies. And your excuses for it are worse than the well, God you're, who you're, did you're, it. You're, stip, you're, 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 you're emphasizing babies only. There's a little more to it than Oh, that. well, let's don't worry it's, about it's, the babies. Let's yes, the don't worry kind of about the babies. What, what, what did the, the giraffes fuck? do? What? How evil were all the giraffes as well? Like, what? What? What was the kangaroo up to that was so wicked that they all needed to well, die? It's okay. everybody, dude. It's not just the babies, but the babies are fun to talk well, about. Missing... Okay, okay, but what you're what you're doing is you're assuming that the world back before the flood is the same as the world is is now and it, wasn't. it, it was a doesn't matter it was you're it completely matter. missing the point it matter complete why oh, do you think why do you think they had dinosaurs back then do you know what do you know why there oh. were dinosaurs before the flood could you could you answer me that one why do you think there was dinosaurs enlighten us rob you've got the answers yeah, tell us your answer because i've got one but i know you're yeah. not gonna like it <laughs> all i got God. i got a lot i got a lot before the flood the world was different we were living under a higher atmospheric pressure because we had, uh, I guess you could call it a dome around us. And what it did, it blocked the cosmic rays, okay? And it gave us a higher cosmic oxygen rays. content. So everything was bigger back then. Uh, the reptiles actually grew to uh, the size of dinosaurs, which they couldn't do today. You know that reptile lower... growth isn't dependent they on oxygen oxygen. saturation, they right? They're not insects. The horses. Oh, he's so okay. he's so yeah, you, yeah, no, you know that you the reptile growth reptile growth isn't dependent on oxygen saturation insects could you could maybe make that argument but not reptiles more oxygen saturation they get a lot bigger they get a lot bigger if you put a reptile into a biosphere of a half an atmosphere extra in pressure you're going to get pretty big pretty fast nope there's no, no evidence for that whatsoever, dude. Rob, I think we've gone as far as we can go. You're going to a bearded dragon and put it in an oxygen tank and tell me when you can ride it to the studio. And you're like, no, that's not how that works. Rob, you need to read something besides the Bible. You put, a, you put okay. an animal in a recompression chamber, a half an atmosphere, extra in pressure, okay, which is seven what, pounds more. When, did, when was that tested? Added on to point Who did that experiment and showed that? It's going to get a lot bigger. Pardon me? Who did that experiment and showed that? When was that tested? Cite your source. Uh, you got to Google it. I don't know the name of the doctor, but he has a museum. The the, the recompression chamber is oh. there. He has a biosphere going. And if you look Probably at the Dr. Ken Hoven, I'm guessing. It sounds Hoven. like Ken Hoven, yeah. Are we talking about Dr. Ken Hoven? Hoven? No. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ken Hoven doesn't so have a, a recompression chamber at his... Uh, <laughs> Nor does he have a doctorate. <laughs> uh, Nor is he a doctor. Hey, well, he's got a doctorate, Rob, but not from not from one of your schools. But he has a doctorate. Oh, okay. Hey, Rob, you know, school, you listen, know. Rob. We got a lot of calls. We are out well, of time. If you want to apologize, depending on what you want to believe, right? We're we're going to let you go, Rob. I appreciate the call. Um, read My something goodness. besides the Bible, man. That's all I got to say. Your God sounds like a monster, Rob. Yep. I'm sorry that you're Would, excited about that. Wouldn't believe in that God if you could prove he existed. Bye bye. 
Oh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll believe it for sure if you prove it's real, but I'm not worshiping it. If that God's real, I'm its enemy. Believe that. Whew, man, justification for drowning babies. You got, you, uh, nothing well, like that. It was a good thing. thing to do. If ever yeah. you're like, hey, it was a really good idea to drown all those people. You don't understand what it was like. <laughs> okay, we got to take All those babies were dealing blackjack. <laughs> yeah, they were drug pushers or something. Jesus oh. <laughs> Christ. <laughs>